Whoever has his head chopped off receives all the riches but has only one more year to live. Essel, a staff member at the body house, arrives in the kingdom on a snowy Christmas morning. Uses a bucket of cold water to shock Gawain, her client, into awakening. Gawain discovers he slept too late. He rushes out of the building to prepare for his uncle's large Christmas supper. Later, the king will throw. Gawain tells his mother he spent the entire night in church when he gets to the castle, but she doesn't believe him. Gawain observes his mother is not appropriately attired for that. She says she doesn't have the courage to attend the party this year, but she wants him to go and fun to you. As soon as Gawain departs, his mother gathers her maids and covers her eyes with a blindfold. She writes a letter with a green seal on it as part of an unique ceremony. At the gathering, Gawain is invited to sit close to the king because he is related to him. The king needs to know. The queen tells them he'll get his own because Gawain doesn't have any of his own stories to share with them. When he turns into a mythical knight like those seated at the table, tales. For Gawain, this is quite important. Because becoming a knight has always been his dream. The letter Gawain's mother composed is burned while. The ashes begin to sprout, and the monarch starts to speak before being abruptly cut off. By the green knight, a being that resembles a tree. A letter bearing a green seal is presented by the knight. And when the queen breaks that seal, the green knight takes control of her and she starts reading. His voice reading the letter. The green knight desires to participate in a holiday game where one of the the warriors of the king attempt to strike him. If he is successful, he will receive the green knight's axe, but he must also visit the green church in a year to allow the green knight to make his appearance. The same impact, the letter sets itself on fire when the queen is finished reading it, and the queen faints and collapses. The king declines the offer since he is too old, and he invites any of. Gawain steps forward prepared to show his medal in place of his knights. However, he lacks a sword. The monarch then grants him his own while reassuring Gawain that it is only a game. Gawain is prepared for battle. However, the green knight surprises him by dropping his axe to the ground, causing moss to appear. On the rocks, Gawain lowers his sword as the green knight kneels and offers his neck. The result was the knight losing his mind. Gawain believes everything is finished, but when he turns around, Gawain is reminded to visit the green knight when he gets up and raises his head. A year. The green knight then departs, and after an awkward pause, everyone rejoices. Gawain's triumph. While his mother is dying, Gawain returns the king's sword and stores the axe. Exhausted but proud of herself, she fell to her knees. After almost a year, the tale of Gawain's. A puppet performance is used to explain victory to the children, and it depicts the conclusion of the second meeting as. For their hero, it is pretty heartbreaking. Gawain is mocked by Essel for becoming a local legend, and he detests it. Nevertheless, he agrees to stand for a stark portrait. When Gawain leaves for the night, in the neighborhood pub, the inebriated patrons discuss the legend of the Green Knight, but they also bring up a rumor about. Due to his arrogance and the fact that Gawain's mother is a witch, he is beaten by Gawain. Once he gets home, he is taken aback to see the king and his mother present. The king informs Gawain that festivities are. When Gawain reminds him that he said it was a game, the king points out that it's just around the corner. Still lacking, Gawain doubts that the Green Knight will be there to greet him. However, the king tells Gawain to proceed after softly caressing his face, the initial snowfall. Gawain starts to get ready for his journey. The monarch and queen bring a shield to church to be blessed, Gawain's mother creates a special green girdle with the axe after taking it out of its box. A rune tucked up inside, Essel opposes Gawain's departure but Gawain explains that he made good on his commitment. When, as they get ready to leave, his mother hands him the girdle and instructs him to wear it constantly. Because it will keep him safe from harm. Gawain only makes nighttime campout stops while traveling alone. And to make himself feel less alone, he takes the bell Essel gave him and remembers their most recent conversation. Essel, had shown affection for him and requested to become his lady, but Gawain was disappointed by failing to respond to her. The following day, Gawain arrives at a crossroads and picks a direction instinctively. As he starts to cross the woods, he sees a fox trotting close by. A body against a tree, as well. Later, Gawain finds himself on a deserted battlefield. That's him, discovers a young scavenger who reveals that he is searching for the bodies of his brothers. Gawain makes reference to the Gawain throws a penny at the young kid after he gives directions and requests a reward at the Green Chapel. 
Gawain takes the road through the forest after stopping by the creek to let his horse get dressed. Scavenger mentioned, but after taking a few steps inside, two thieves corner him. They seize him, then, holding him down, the scavenger presents him to him and learns that the purpose of bringing him here was to plunder him. Before the other two thieves tie him up, the boy pokes fun at Gawain with his knife and takes the girdle. They examine his belongings while leaving him on the ground. The scavenger dismantles the barrier, and when he discovers the axe, he is so impressed that he rides away with it while his friends watch. Leave the other things behind and follow him. A skeleton appears a little while after the robbers have left. Appears just where Gawain is, but this is actually a vision of Gawain's own demise. Refusing, Gawain drags his corpse through the earth like a worm to die in such a pitiful manner, reaching. He uses his sword to cut the cords, but while doing so, he accidentally harms himself. Once he has his belongings back, Gawain runs off into the woods and gets lost. By the time dusk arrives, he discovers a lake, and is horrified to see an abandoned house close by. Gawain comes in, he enters the structure to find it deserted, so he chooses to unwind on the bed. Soon after, Winifred wakes him up and asks him why he's using her bed. Gawain conveys regret and justification. He is a wanderer who has lost his path, which prompts Winifred to say that she has also lost something. She creeps Gawain out when she begins to move because she floats instead of walking, making Gawain assume she's some kind of spirit. When they make it outside, Winifred explains that a lord came to her house and tried to take advantage of her, but because she resisted, he killed her, and now her head is at the bottom of the lake. Winifred would like Gawain to retrieve her head, and when he wonders what he'd get as a reward, Winifred expresses confusion at the request. Gawain decides to do the right thing and jumps into the lake, where he begins hearing voices calling for him. Suddenly the water turns red and Gawain finds the skull, so he quickly takes it before going back to the surface. Winifred is gone, but the fox is there again, only to leave after it. Confirms Gawain is fine. With the skull in hand, Gawain returns to the bedroom and finds Winifred's skeleton on the bed, which causes the skull to become her actual head. Gawain drops it in shock, and hears Winifred tell him that the Green Knight is someone he knows before picking it up again causing it to turn back into a skull. Then Gawain reunites the skull with its body on the bed, and at that moment the sun raises, revealing the Green Knight's axe waiting for him in the room. Gawain continues his journey on foot carrying the weight of the axe. The fox seems to be following him, and when Gawain stops at a cave to rest, the fox tries to enter it. At first Gawain tries to scare it away, but since the fox insists, Gawain lets him share the cave with him. The next morning, the two of them begin traveling side by side. After a few hours of walking, they reach the top of a hill and Gawain trips, causing him to roll down to the bottom and almost lose Essel's bell. Later, Gawain is so hungry that he eats the first mushrooms he finds, but they make him throw up and hallucinate that his hand is covered by moss. Suddenly, Gawain hears some thunder rumbling in the distance, and when he looks up, he sees a creepy person staring at him from afar. The next day, Gawain and the fox keep on walking until the ground starts to shake, and that's how they find a group of giants emerging from behind the hills. Gawain immediately runs to them and asks to ride on their shoulders, but when one of the giants tries to pick him up, the fox growls at them to keep them away. The giants responded by letting out a high-pitched noise and moving on. So Gawain and fox take the opposite road. Hours later, Gawain is so tired that he falls to the ground not sure he can continue. Fortunately the fox finds a castle nearby, which inspires Gawain to stand up and run to the doors to ask for help because he passes out. The next morning Gawain, he wakes up on a beautiful bed while someone touches his forehead. At first he thinks it's his mother, but after blinking, he discovers it's the lord of the castle. The lord's a fan of Gawain's story and tells him not to worry because it's still December 21st, meaning he has time to rest. Then the Lord takes Gawain to have breakfast and introduces him to his mother, who has the eyes blindfolded, and his lady, who shocks Gawain because she looks just like Essel. Gawain kisses her hand and turns down her invitation to stay a few days because he has to arrive at the chapel soon. The Lord corrects. He explains that the green chapel is only a few hours from the castle, so Gawain can stay and rest properly for a few days to then leave on Christmas morning. 
Gawain accepts to stay and wanders around the castle, where he discovers the fox depicted in the paintings. He also finds a huge library and learns the lady has read all the books, she's also written a few of them. As a token of her in appreciation, she gifts Gawain a gift and asks for a kiss, but Gawain only kisses her cheek. Then the lady asks Gawain to sit for her so she can paint him, and using a trick of light, the lady creates a very eerie portrait of Gawain upside down while he sits in the next room. When she finally shows the final product, the lady notices the bell. Gawain carries it around his neck and asks if it was a gift from a loved one, but since he says no, she breaks the string and steals the bell. Sometime later, the Lord comes back from hunting and gifts Gawain the deer he killed. Both men go back inside to have a drink, and the Lord surprises Gawain by promising he'll gift him his best hunt. Every day, however, in return, Gawain must give him anything he receives from the castle. Gawain doesn't understand how there can be something that doesn't belong to the Lord already, but the Lord just says the castle works in mysterious ways. The lady cuts in to discuss the green knight and how the greens of nature always find a way to grow back. While the lady continues to play with her cards, the Lord asks what Gawain wishes to gain from this whole deal, so Gawain explains. He wants enough honor to finally become a knight. When Gawain goes to get ready for bed, he receives a visit from the mother, who touches his face in her own chest before leaving with no explanation. The next morning, Gawain wakes up to discover that the lady has been watching him sleep. She comes closer to touching Gawain wonders why he didn't come to her bedroom last night, Gawain explains. He wanted to but didn't do it because it wasn't right. Then the lady asks Gawain if he believes in magic and reveals she has the green girdle, she even knows that it's enchanted to protect whoever wears it. Suddenly, the lady climbs on the bed and begins getting frisky with Gawain, asking him to take the girdle from her as she helps him finish. Once he does, the lady lets him keep the girdle, but she also leaves his own seed on his hand as she points out he's no knight. After she leaves, Gawain is shocked to discover the mother has been standing there all along. Tired of these games, Gawain decides to leave. In the forest, he finds the Lord, who can tell Gawain received something from the castle. In order to take it back, he kisses Gawain to make up for what he did with the lady. Gawain pushes his hand away and announces he's living, so the Lord opens his bag and reveals his latest hunt. It's the fox, who thankfully is still alive. After a few hours of walking, Gawain and the fox finds a stream surrounded by an orange fog. There's a boat on the water, but when Gawain tries to approach it, the fox growls at him to stop him. Gawain is confused by this attitude, until the fox suddenly reveals it can talk and warns Gawain that there's no happy ending ahead of him. The fox thinks Gawain should return home, so Gawain swings his axe at it to scare the animal away for not being supportive. Gawain takes the boat down the steam and only comes back to land when he finds a road marked by a cross. It only takes him a few minutes on foot to reach the chapel, and inside he finds the green knight sitting at the altar, but he's asleep. Gawain sits in front of him and after putting down the axe, he waits. On Christmas morning, the green knight finally awakes. He grabs the axe and announces they'll finish the game, for which Gawain must kneel to receive the same blow he threw last year. Gawain kneels as asked but when the green knight raises his axe, Gawain's so scared that he flinches. The knight teases him for it since he had a whole year to be ready for this moment, thus Gawain takes a moment to gather courage and asks him to try again. The green knight raises his axe once more, but Gawain still can't help himself and moves away. He wonders if the game truly is just this, and when the green knight confirms, Gawain kneels again, only to move away when the axe comes for him. Refusing to die so soon, Gawain runs away, and as he crosses the forest he's surprised to find his horse. Sometime later, Gawain returns to the city and reunites with his mother, who immediately takes care of his wounds. Afterward, Gawain visits Essel, who is sad to see her bell is gone. The two of them get frisky together, but Gawain never takes off the girdle. A few days later, Gawain is called to the castle. Because the king doesn't have much time left. With the last of his strength, the king finally knights. Gawain and gifts him his precious sword. After the king's death, Gawain becomes the new monarch. Which seems to have been his mother's plan all along. Nine months later, Essel gives birth to Gawain's son.
Gawain still doesn't marry her though, he just shows up to pick up the baby. And he leaves after leaving some money for the body house without caring about leaving. A devastated Essel behind. A year later, Gawain marries a noblewoman, and on their wedding night, he doesn't allow her to take off his girdle. They fulfill their marital duties, but Gawain doesn't find them as satisfying as it was with Essel. Years pass and the kingdom gets involved in a war. Gawain decides to start training his child as a knight, but by the time the boy as soon as the boy becomes of age, he dies in battle. The consequences of this war change the citizens. Opinions of Gawain and he becomes a hated leader that gets stones thrown at. Essel hates him even more now because her son is dead, but at least the queen gives birth to a new heir. A few years later, the castle is under siege, and Gawain is abandoned by everyone, including his own wife and his mother. Alone with the eerie painting that has been hung straight, Gawain finally takes off his girdle, which he has never taken off before. This causes his head to fall and the crown rolls away. Suddenly Gawain blinks and finds himself in the chapel again, it turns out all he saw had been a vision showing him the future he'd get if he runs away. The green knight raises his axe but Gawain asks for a moment to take off the girdle, which should leave him vulnerable. Now Gawain can say, he's ready for real, and the green knight gently caresses his face, congratulating him for finally being brave and keeping his word. Afterward the green knight tells him, now, off with your head, 